Hello everyone, you can call me Freebie Wits, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Analyze and Adapt, where I see if a video game would work in three different mediums. Tabletop, as in board and card games, tabletop roleplay, like Dungeons and Dragons, and finally, as a LARP. Today, I'll be analyzing and adapting Darkest Dungeon. So what is Darkest Dungeon? If you ask the internet, you might get some conflicting information. Some people consider it a roguelike game, or at least a roguelite one. Others argue that only the individual characters die, not you the player, so it doesn't count. Regardless of what it actually is, everyone agrees that it's a dungeon crawler with turn-based combat that's highly dependent on positioning, sanity, and luck. The premise is that you've inherited an old estate, which is good. Unfortunately, the estate is in ruins, which is bad. But you have heroes to help you fix it up, which is also good. The said heroes will keep dying. That's bad. If you survive, they'll get you treasure. That's good. Your final goal is to reach the final, darkest dungeon. I think I should retire this joke. I've taken it a bit far. Regardless, it's a pretty fun game, even if it can get frustrating at times. So with that all in mind, with some gameplay in the background, let's see if we can adapt Darkest Dungeon. Starting with Tabletop. So one of the most obvious and iconic features of Darkest Dungeon is the voice acting. While uncommon, there are a few board games that do voice acting as well, through cheap, tinny speakers or through a DVD, like uh, Atmosphere. If you want something more recent in terms of technology, some board games also have apps developed for them as companion pieces for the game, such as Dead of Winter. If we have a Darkest Dungeon app for the board game, I can see it taking over the randomized elements. So instead of shuffling decks or rolling dice ourselves, the app would do it for us and eliminate the need to look up tables or results in the rulebook. All of that would be then accompanied by the amazing voice work of Wayne June. Normally I'd say such a companion app would be optional at best, but if you don't have the voice of Wayne June telling you how badly you messed up or kick ass, are you really playing a Darkest Dungeon game then? Regardless, just keep in mind that any dice, card or random elements from here on out can be taken over by the app. I'll still be mentioning them for completion's sake and for people who don't want Wayne June's voice in their ears, aka the crazy people. Speaking of crazy people, the idea of stress or sanity levels isn't a new one in board games. Most notably is Arkham Horror, which is based on the Cthulhu mythos, which in turn inspired much of Darkest Dungeon in the first place, so it's very fitting in my eyes. In Arkham Horror, sanity is more like a character's mental hit points. Lose them and you have to go to the asylum to recover. It's bad, but not quite game over unless you lose all your stamina as well. In Darkest Dungeon, it's less of a type of hit point and more of a gauge. Once that gauge is maxed out, your character's resolve is tested. They either break and gain an affliction, or overcome the darkness and become virtuous. This stress gauge can further be increased going over the maximum. Once it reaches 200%, then your character has a heart attack and dies, no matter how many hit points they had remaining. While Arkham Horror has the ability to be played by oneself, it also has the option to be played cooperatively, something that the board game version of Darkest Dungeon wouldn't do if we adapted it in a one-to-one -one way. For the most part, everything can be randomized with dice rolls or cards. When it comes to scouting rooms and the like, we can have the cards be played faced up in a line or face down if the scouting chance fails. Normally I'd say that it'd be impractical and cumbersome to play, but with the app and Wayne June's voice taking care of the random elements and other background events, it might actually work. That said, this proposed adaptation is so close to the original work that it almost feels like there's no point in playing it in the first place. Only the desire to own something tactile and physical would be a reason to have it. I suppose the lore of cheating would be there. Unless you mod the video game, you can't really cheat in Darkest Dungeon beyond making a backup save and reverting it when things get bad enough. I'd argue that cheating defeats the purpose of such a game, but if that's how people enjoy it, then who am I to argue? Either way, let's move on to the next medium and talk about tabletop RPGs. Just like board games, sanity levels in tabletop RPGs aren't a new concept. Dark Heresy, Vampire the Masquerade, and Call of Cthulhu exist just to name a few different games that handle it in different ways. What would make Darkest Dungeon unique is how easy it is to heal or manipulate this stat. 
When a character is afflicted by having too much stress, they just have to rest up at town to get rid of it. When you have too much stress, you can have a drink. When you have a fear of something, you can get the trait removed at the sanitarium. Despite how I've worded it thus far, stress isn't always such a negative trait to have. To me, stress works much like a resource. Get too much and eventually the character will either break down or overcome it. In the event that they overcome it, they have a chance to become virtuous, almost always turning the tide of battle when they do so. However, if the character gains too much stress, even beyond the breaking point, they then have a heart attack and immediately die as mentioned in the previous board game section. Anyways, let's focus more on the individuals, the players and their advancement. Here's where it gets kinda weird. In Darkest Dungeon, each character can level up to a maximum of level 6. Each level increases the character's resistance against being stunned, debuffed, and other maladies, but beyond that, it doesn't really make them inherently stronger than a character of lower level. What makes a character directly stronger are equipment and training from the smith, all things that cost money in the video game. Now, granted, the hero has to be of a certain level before equipping certain arms and armor, or learning a stronger version of their current skill, but beyond that, their power is restricted by gold and resources. There's no point in being a veteran of a million battles if the hair doesn't spend any gold on your advancement. Sure, your character might have a desirable quirk that places them above similar level characters, but that's all up to random chance. Then you have the issue of stress relieving activities all costing money to participate in. In the video game, it's implied that all heroes get a cut of the gold every time they set off on an admission, but beyond a character being a kleptomaniac, we don't have any hard numbers on what a character would receive or have on hand outside a few exceptions. Exceptions like the Houndmaster who always has some dog treats on hand, or the Grave Robber and Antiquarian's ability to produce items at camp, implying certain reasons on why they have them in the first place. But in the latter two cases, the items which they have are randomized. In many systems, wealth and material possessions are concrete objects that you can see on your character sheets. In other systems, it can be based on circumstance or a dice roll as a stat. For some games, the Game Master will just assume you have the necessities, even if you haven't mentioned getting them in the first place. Point is, outside of weapons, armor, and equipment from special abilities, the heroes don't get any items that the hair doesn't give them in the first place. To keep to the spirit of the game, we don't actually need to roleplay every single moment, if said players are playing from the perspective of the heroes, that is. In that regard, we can time skip as much as we want, between missions, stress-relieving visits, or town events in general. Besides the obvious dungeon crawling that the players will participate in, we can also run them through the stress relieving events as I mentioned before. Having a non-combat game in Darkest Dungeon isn't just appealing, but outright required to heal wounds and lower stress levels. Even those who want to fight can still have a tavern brawl or stop pickpockets. A resourceful game master will find something for them to do in their downtime. And of course it will let the players bond as characters. The idea of having a base of operations, of a home to come back to, to become familiar with is a great tool for grounding the players too, as they will grow to love it. Something required if the lethality of the system is kept. While a player will no doubt eventually become attached to a hero, said hero will no doubt die, only to be replaced by another wanderer. The Darkest Dungeon will always play host to four players at a time. No more, no less. Five if you include the Game Master. A Game Master that I'm willing to call the hare for the sake of flavor. So, in the end, just like the video game, it will be the hare who decides when and where the heroes will go, and when they get some stress relief. For the sake of not splitting the party, I'm willing to allow all four party members to go to the same place, or at least the same building for some party-based shenanigans. While the lack of actual resource management might take away some agency from the players, it might turn out to be a good thing. If players are no longer strictly concerned with riches, it might let them focus on fighting and role-playing more. As far as tabletop RPGs go, it's somewhat of a railroad of a game, but that's not always a bad thing, and the stress-related mechanics are a useful tool to help with role-playing. This is where the ease of adaptation, however, sadly ends. Up until now, we've only experienced board games and RPGs, both with turn-based mechanics. With LARP, it's all going to happen in real time. It's time to test my resolve. It's time to analyze the darkest medium. Too cliché? A bit cliché. Let's just ignore and go to the next medium. So the problem with sanity mechanics in LARPs is that unless it's an event or a hard mechanic that always triggers under very specific but clear conditions, 
we can't really do it here. For the most part, being insane is a player's choice. They choose if their character breaks or not. I imagine sanity mechanics do exist in other LARPs, but if they did, it wouldn't be applied the same way that HB does, unless it's a purely psychological game of sorts. If we did have a LARP that used sanity as another pull of HP in a game that also has hit points, the player would have to keep track of both of them and memorize how much damage they take for both. In LARP, a real-time medium, you have to keep things simple. More numbers in calculations, and the player will either have to fudge the numbers or pause the game to get things sorted out. So as I mentioned before, if we have to add sanity mechanics, we'd have to have them trigger under very specific and clear conditions. Having players keep track of these conditions would be very difficult, which is why I suggest that we have some sort of game master or narrator, preferably one with a fantastic voice, thus keeping to Darkest Dungeon's spirit of having some fantastic voice work. The narrator could yell things out like, You are all taking a point of stress damage as the walls seemingly close all around you. Now, a single point of stress damage might not seem like much, but it could add up. If I were to keep to my original statement that we should keep numbers simple, we could also have the players break out at 10 points of stress. The narrator could at this point roll some dice or draw a card to determine if the character becomes afflicted or not. This focus on individual players would require the LARP to remain small or have multiple narrators working together at the same time. The fact that Darkest Dungeon pitches four heroes against an entire dungeon of monsters means that we can adapt things this way as well easily enough. Now having a collection of NPCs in a LARP would make things more difficult to organize, as nobody really wants to wait around doing nothing until the heroes turn up, but I suppose the various encounters can be played by this exact same people in different kits each time. The reinforcements could be handled this way as well. Moving on to combat, in the video game, some attacks do more damage than others at the cost of accuracy. In LARP, you're as accurate as the attack you yourself make. Accuracy in LARP isn't really a stat that you can put on a character sheet. Not only that, but the fact that damage has variance in the video game would have to be removed. While it's simple to do in a turn-based environment, trying to figure out if my attack does 1 or 5 damage would slow things down way too much. Then you have the healing and camp mechanics. In the video game, if I have a healer, I can't heal outside of combat. In LARP or even the tabletop RPG, what's stopping me from using my healing powers on my allies? Hell, the Plague Doctor has the ability to remove diseases when camping, so why can't they do that when they're resting at town instead of having them pay the sanitarium? There's a lot that doesn't make sense if you think too hard about it in Darkest Dungeon. As they say, that way lies madness. Which kind of fits when you think about it. Now previously I mentioned how odd it is for the players to not have loot, but in LARP we can sort of relax this a bit. Now, I wouldn't call it a problem, but it's a quirk in LARP games that I can't just kill someone and take their sword, even if there's nothing stopping me from an in-character point of view. In Darkest Dungeon, you don't really loot equipment like that, and at most you gain trinkets for your players. And trinkets are just that, trinkets. Inexpensive for most people to get, little $1 items that you can grab from most secondhand stores if need be. Furthermore, upgrading equipment in the game doesn't really change anything visually on the character's model, so the player is never pushed into getting different gear unless they want it themselves. I've said this at least once in other videos, that LARP is a very expensive hobby, and there's no reason to make it even more expensive for your players. At the end of the day, Darkest Dungeon, from the hero's perspective, is about delving into a dangerous place, getting stressed out, and then going back to space for some well-deserved rest. If I had to adapt Darkest Dungeon into a LARP, I'd have a town that the players, with their loot and gold, would improve over time. I'd make it their base of operations, a place to call their own. I'd post missions on a board with preset areas for each. All those missions and parties would have a narrator assigned to them. I'd also host events, like ones in the video game. Things like archery competitions, holidays and disasters. The NPCs might be more difficult to organize, but no more than having a town of several buildings set up at least. Perhaps I'd make the Darkest Dungeon a special event that can only be attempted on Halloweens or something along those lines. A once a year sort of thing if you would, just to make it that much more special. To that end, I feel that while a Darkest Dungeon lot might not reflect the video game in terms of mechanics, we can at least replicate the spirit and camaraderie for the players. So that's my quick analysis of Darkest Dungeon and how it can be adapted into three different mediums. 
How do you think it'd work? Have any of you tried adapting any elements of Darkest Dungeon yourself? And if so, how did it go? Comment below and maybe, just maybe, we'll come back to the subject sometime in the future. This is FreebieWits, and thank you for watching. Alright, let's see if we can do some uh, voice work for Darkest Dungeon. <laughs> Confidence is a slow and insidious killer. Comment and subscribe to this channel. Like it as well. Something something insanity.